Hello everyone, I'm Lara from Eprosima and today I will host this embedded working group. Uh, I would like to say that it would be great if someone of you has a personal or professional micro ROS project and want to present here in at the embedded working group. So in this case, please contact me and we can arrange a meeting and talk about about it. Okay. As a recap on our A live demo about the integration of ROS2 and PX4 through micro ROS DDS, micro XRCD DDS, sorry. And today we have here Pablo Garrido from Eprosima, and he's going to show a demo about running safe DDS on the CREA KR260 Robotics Starter Kit by AMD. So, Pablo? Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. I'm going to share my screen. Can you hear me well? Yes, very well. Okay. So let me know if I'm sharing the screen. OK. So well, thank you for having me here. And well, today we are having a quick recap of a demo that we at the Proxima uh, bring to, to the Roscon this year in New Orleans together with AMD. Thank you to AMD for having us uh, there in the in the booth. And well, for this demo, we tried to 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 create a, a situation where we can explain what is Safe DDS together with with the the hardware that uh, AMD was presenting. That was the Crea KR260, and along with ROS2. So we tried to make a mix with all those uh, three different things and, and prepare something that can be shown in the in the Roscon. First of all, for those of you that that does not know uh, Safe DDS, Safe DDS is the latest uh, DDS implementation of, of Eprosima. Uh, as you may know, we are the company behind Fast DDS, which is the, the default middleware in, in ros And we also are the company behind XSDDS, the micro XSDDS, that is the default middleware for, for micro -ROS. And in the last two years, we have been working in a, in a new embedded and functional safety certified uh, DDS implementation that is Safe DDS. In general, super quick, Safe DDS is a, a safety certified by means of the ISO 26262 for functional safety in automotive. Uh, it's a DDS compliant uh, middleware library that targets hard real time safety critical systems. Those systems may be normally mid low range MCU, the same ones that we have in the micro sector, but, but you can run Safe DDS directly on those uh, MCUs. Of course, CPUs with functional uh, safety requirements and also ECUs because we target the automotive. Uh, mainly the automotive uh, functional safety sector, so uh, easy use. And well, we create, we allow in, in that sense to create DDS uh, ready uh, systems, DDS participants that communicate with all the DDS data space from these vendors of, of, or from another vendor uh, with targets on ACLD that is the highest level of, uh, of um, the highest level that, that the ISO 26262 certification provides. Uh, the main value proposition is that we have created a, a, a DDS library from scratch following uh, strict guidelines such as MISRE C++ or AutoSAR 14. And we also have an, a new uh, set of tests at, at different levels, uh, unit module system tests that allows us to have a 100% branch coverage with requirements and code documentation for every single line. Uh, a very detailed procedure for this DDS library. We have implemented it in C++ subset, and we target, uh, as we are going to see in this demo that I'm going to show in a couple of slides, we have a, a high focus on modularity and portability. We wanted to create a library that is very multi-platform, that have a very flexible execution model, and that can be fit on, on different uh, transports. That means that this safety DS library will not only run on, on the common Linux, Windows, or QNX. We also can run on free RTOS, on safe RTOS, on C Fire, on, on any kind of embedded RTOS, but also we can run on bare metal because we have a detached transport approach in the same way that we have for micros. So uh, we can implement the DDS functionality on top of any kind 
of a networking libraries such as free Arctos plus TCP, lightweight, lightweight IP, all those uh, networking libraries that we are used to to have in the micro ROS or in the ROS2 embedded world. Uh, with respect, respect to the execution model, SafeDDS also allows you to run on RTOSs. We do not have uh, a fixed uh, threading model, such as, for example, uh, FastDDS has. Uh, we have a flexible execution approach that allows us to integrate the SafeDDS operation inside of different uh, free RTOS tags, for example, depending on priorities or even in uh, well, the application execution model that you have in, in the final DDS application. Finally, and uh, one of the most important points of uh, safety DDS is that you have full control over the over the memory. There are multiple modes. Uh, we have online documentation for that. You can read it if you are in, if you have interest. But there are uh, multiple memory modes in safety DDS, and one of them. Uh, one, the, the most important one is the no allocation mode where there is no heap at all, but you also can configure the DDS operation to, to be run on, in, in, I mean, in the, in the no heap mode, all the DDS operation will run on a stack and a static memory, but you also can uh, uh, configure some heap or some dynamic memory that can be used just in configuration time or during the, the whole runtime. That means that the user has full control over the the, the DDS stack. If we talk, uh, if we compare DDS with XDDS, we can see that we have here a full-fledged DDS implementation with certification artifacts for, for functional safety in, in ISO 26262 and an agent-less operation. So DDS will provide you a, a first-class citizen uh, node, a first-class citizen uh, participant in the DDS data space, but it will use slightly higher memory footprint that access than XSDDS. That is the, mid the middleware that you're already using in micros. And if we compare with FastDDS, we can see that we have a more portable and embeddable library because FastDDS cannot be run on the RTOSs that we are gonna see in a couple of slides. For example, we cannot run FastDDS in, in, in free RTOS, but we can run, say, R DDS on free RTOS. So it's more, it is more portable, it is more embeddable. It has a predictable operation and execution because we don't have hidden threading operations. So all the all the behavior of the of the library is well defined, and it uses much less memory. We are going to see a couple of, of examples in a, in a minute. We provide certification artifacts, but we do not provide advanced DDS features, such as for example content filtering or other kind of. Uh, advanced QoSs that you may be used to use in fast DDS. In safe DDS, we only have the normal QoSs, reliability, history, durability, uh, deadline, liveliness, the complete set, but not the, not the advanced uh, option. You will have the, the full documentation in, in the online web page for safe DDS. So just, let's go for the demo. This is a very basic demo where we try to, to implement um, different nodes using safe DDS inside the CREA KR uh, 260 from AMD. This is the robotic kit that they provide uh, for for the K26 SOM system of module. We have you you have the I mean the 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 KR 260 uh, is just the, the the board where you have the connectors and all the thing, but the, the brain inside of that is the the K26 system of module that inside have the the sync ultra scale plus and PSOC. So at the end, what we have here is a super huge uh, Cortex A53 running Ubuntu. We have a core dedicated for real time operation, a Cortex R5. Uh, and then we have a, a program logic sector, sector where we have like FPGA and where we can instant, instantiate different uh, IPs. In that, in 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 our case, we are gonna instantiate uh, micro blaze cores that are uh, CPUs, MCUs that can be uh, configured inside the FPGA. All those cores, both the the ones that lives in the FPGA part and the one the ones that are uh, in the in the hard part of the of the chip, the A53 and the R5, are connected to the Ethernet, so they can communicate with the other uh, ones or with external systems using the Ethernet. And we found that the the most basic examples uh, provide us with a free Arthos, uh, a very easy free Arthos port. 
a very easy to use free auto sport for the Cortex R5 and a very easy to use free auto sport for the micro base. So we just went and uh, build safety ideas for those architectures and make a, an application that, of course, because we are we are here in the ROST2 embedded working group, we target the application, we made the application to be compatible with ROST2 so we can communicate this chip, these three three different uh, cores, these three different applications with an external ROST2 system to uh, show the compatibility that we can achieve using safety ideas. Uh, when we talk about the free artos part, the the um, communication library, the networking library that the that uh, AMD Korea solution provide to to us was Lightweight IP. So we run Safe DDS on top of free artos with Lightweight IP. We also have ports for running uh, Safe DDS on top of free artos plus TCP. That is another uh, networking library, but in this case we use it uh, Lightweight IP. What we wanted to show here. Well, mainly two functional safety say certified components, uh, the hardware, the AMD hardware, Korea KR260, and the software part, the middleware part, that is the Proxima Safety DS. Both of them um, are, are functional safety certified by means of the ISO 26262. And the key points of the demo is that we have a safety certified combo that is that is highly embeddable and has seamless integration with ROST2. What we are going to do is to create a ROST2 node using Safety DS in the Ubuntu part, in the big uh, CPU, in the Cortex A A53. We are going to create another different ROST2 node in the Cortex R, here in this case uh, on top of FreeRTOS. And we also are going to run a ROST2 node on top of the uh, MicroBlaze soft core that is running FreeRTOS inside the FPGA part. And also, we are going to have fast DDS, that is the default ROS2 middleware, running on the on an external computer that runs a normal installation of ROS2. And we are going to have a ping pong communication approach that also measures uh, a bit the latencies that we have between each other. And also we publish the resources that are being used in each one of the nodes, the memory consumption, the CPU usage, and the latency that is being measured by means of, the, of this ping pong approach. Here you have a an explanation where well the cortex uh, a53 is communicating both with the microblaze and the cortex r5 and in the case of the cortex r5 it is just communicating ping ponging in the in the in this sense with the microblaze so we can have communication from each one of the of the computational units with the other and all the all of them um, all these three units are communicating with the external rust2 computer sending reports. As we're going to see in this slide, this is a video, if I recall well. Here, we are inside of the of the development environment that the Cortex A53 and the Ubuntu platform uh, provides. We are flashing the, the, the FPGA here and and we are flashing the Cortex R5 from the bigger, uh, the biggest uh, core in the in the in the um, chip. We are flash flashing the safety DDS uh, application. Now you can see the the application in safety DDS running, and they are matching each other. In a minute, we can see that here they, they are logging that they have found a uh, ROS2 topics uh, that of course are, are are written using a DDS API. They are not pure ROS2 node. They are DDS applications that simulates the ROS2 behavior. As you may know, this is very simple because the only thing that you, you have to do is mang uh, perform a name mangling on top of the topic name and the type name, as you can see here. And here we can see the three applications uh, in the left side, the Cortex A A A53, uh, right top, the Cortex R, and in right bottom, the, the FPGA. Uh, well, logging that they have found the other nodes living on the other uh, computational units. Now we are going to open a ros tool in a, in the computer that is RQT. And here we can see how the Save DDS uh, nodes will uh, find and match the ROS discovery info topic that, as you may know, is an internal ROS topic for, for exchanging uh, node information. So we can be able to just open the RQT uh, tool and see 
or nodes uh, in the in the graphical user interface. And here you can see this ROS2 part running on an external computer that is able to detect the nodes that we are creating directly from the uh, embedded systems, directly from safe EDS, both in the A53 core, in R5, and also the microblaze MB. And you can see that ROS2 is also able to detect that they are communicating with each other using this ping pong approach. Uh, and they are publishing in some topics, subscribing to another topic. They also have this safety as resource usage uh, topic for each one of the core. So we can, I'm not sure if we are gonna see this correctly in this video, but we can subscribe to this uh, resource usage topics. And here we are using our QT to subscribe to them. And we can see that we are receiving uh, a common ROS2 uh, topic with the header, with the timestamp, and some custom uh, fields that we have set. For example, in this case, we are sending the CPU usage uh, that in the case of the big CPU is very low. But in the case of the of the embedded devices, is more is higher. Uh, note that we do not have optimized this demo to be performant in terms of latency or in terms of CPU usage. We only wanted to show an interoperability example. And this is why uh, we are using the 90% of the of the of the CPU usage in the Cortex R5 for this demo. I'm not sure if you can see this well, but here you have a 91% of, of, of the time utilization for the CPU while using a free artos task this is not this is not optimized this is just well the, the demo that we prepare for i'm gonna go to this part on one more time the values that we found for the demo that we uh, bring to the roscon but i guess that well the, the only part that we mm, that is out of the box in this example is the memory usage. For example, you can see the heap usage here uh, in the microblaze part in the FPGA of Save EDS running. We have a max ex uh, stack usage in the free Arthur's task of this of 3.5 uh, uh, kilobytes. This is a very uh, restricted stack usage for a DDS operation. And we can see that the whole application can, can run on top of a, a 33 kilobytes of uh, heap usage here. As you can see, we are using the CDDS mode where we are able to, to use dynamic memory. In the case of the Cortex-R5, we have a very similar values. The heap usage is uh, about 34 kilobytes and the, the max X stack uh, usage is about 3.9 kilobytes. Uh, if we go to the latency, I'm not sure if in this video we're gonna see the latency. Probably yes. We can see that the, the applications are measuring the latency in microseconds. In the case, for example, of the latency measure between the, the Cortex A53 and the Cortex R5, we have, we have 0 0.7 uh, milliseconds of latency, of mean latency. And we have a huge value if we go to the, to the latency between the, the Cortex A with respect to the FPGA. This is because we use it the, the well, the example uh, microblaze, and we did not tune any kind of uh, hardware part or anything inside the Vitis ID. We did not tune anything. We just used the, the core that they provide out of the box, and we run their safety DDS. Of course, these values can be highly optimized. And finally, I would like to go to the final one. Here we have a, a summary of the of the resource usage take note about the the memory consumption of safety dds remember that both the latency and the cpu usage can be tuned uh, because of the threading model the, the execution model of safety dds and because of the the utilities that the library provides this can be tuned to your requirements depending of course on your application but the the interesting part here is the memory consumption you you can embed the whole dds stack the whole safe dds stack in a very uh, small amount of uh, dynamic or static or stack memory because 
all the things can be configured. But in this case, we are using dynamic. Uh, these 45 uh, kilobytes can be perfectly, can perfectly live in, in, in the stack or in the static memory. You can configure all the thing. But in this case, we are using heap. So uh, we can embed safety DS in most of the microcontrollers that we are used to, to use in the embedded Rusty world, AKA MicroRos. So if you have a full uh, fledged DDS solution, do not hesitate to contact us. And well, if you have any question. So that's all in my side, Lara, thank you. Okay, so if there are no any question, I think that that's everything for today. Remember that if you want to collaborate with us in this embedded working group, you can contact me and we can we can talk. To you. Okay, so that's everything for today. Thank you for attending, and well, see you next month. No, uh, see you on January. So bye and thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you guys. Great work. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.